What does Rashard Tate know about you that I don't? He's our next witness. Professor Milgerman, I think you don't actually think through anything. I need hard evidence against Tariq St. Patrick, and I need it now. Can you understand how much is at stake? It's not always about you. I gave you a gun. Use it. Get revenge. He won't rest until he takes everything away from you. Strap up, we're headed out. Power fans, thank you for making those live streams so lit. We went live yesterday on Sunday at 3, and 1,200 of you live Power fans showed up and showed out. And I'm grateful. Thank you. This is going to be my Episode 9 trailer breakdown. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I might be able to put away my glasses. In this trailer, we see a clip where Professor Milgram may be alive. And if she is, honey, I'll take you back. I'll take you back. I'll take you back as my TV wife. I'm sorry I talked about your ashy feet, but at least your pedicure looked good. Could it be that Zeke walked in and was able to save her before she died? We're going to talk about that scene in this trailer breakdown. Let's get it. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you guys get them. Tonight, instead of going at 9, we're going to go early because there's so much in this last episode. We're going to go at 8 o'clock tonight live, so come at 8 o'clock. Be sure to join us next week, my people. The man, Mark Dart, joins me for Power Talks, February 1st at noon. And also be sure to download the Life Gains podcast. Hit me on IG because you guys have been doing a great job of coming over there Let me know when things drop. Let's watch the trailer one more time, and then we're going to go through it and see what is going on. What does Rashad Tate know about you that I don't? He's our next witness. Sorry about Professor Milgram, I didn't think you don't actually think through anything. I need hard evidence against Tariq St. Patrick, and I need it now. Can you understand how much is at stake? It's not always about you. I gave you a gun. Use it. Get revenge. He won't rest until he takes everything away from you. Strap up, we're headed out. Very beginning, we got my man, Meth McClain, and he's on the phone. He hot as hell with Tariq. He wants to know what in the world does Tate have on you? And Tariq is looking like, man, oh, here we go with this mess again. Because Jenny is about to call Tate to the stand. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do you feel the frosty freeze from hell freezing over? Well, I didn't think so, because I don't either. Even if Tate is called to the stand, Tate ain't ratting on Tariq. Tariq. Tate knows where all the bodies is kept. Tate knows everything. Tate was on the original power. He know everything about Tariq. But there is absolutely no way he's going to be ratting on Tariq because Tariq is going to get them photos from Brayton come hell to high water because he wants his sister back. And maybe they will do some kind of pivot where the sister will be given to Tasha. Tasha might come pick up the sister. I hope that's how it ends. But Tate going on stand is just going to be pure entertainment. He ain't ratting. And in the next clip, we see Tariq actually talking to Tate. And Tate is like, Tariq, you dumbass. You do not cover your tracks. Professor Megram is gone now. That looks crazy on your behalf. You was in Lawrence dorm. Tariq, you got to do better, my brother. But just know, Tate ain't going to rat on him. Then in a very, very damning scene, Tariq walks in a room and look at the scared look on his face. Now, that's either Lorenzo Tejada or that's Dante's Pete Mecca. If I had to make my guess, I'm going to say that's Mecca because look at the coat, look at the gray pants. We just seen that same outfit in the last episode when he killed somebody walking past him. And I think that between the two, when it comes to Lorenzo or Mecca. Mecca is probably the most fired up because I mean, hey, your kid Lorenzo's like this. Your kids is gonna have sex with somebody. It ain't worth going back to jail for. Mecca lost all his money. He lost his product. He knows that it's got to be somebody with a plan, and he knows Kane ain't that smart. So I'm sure he's looking at Tariq like, bro, I done had you shut down. You the one that's got to do the plan. So maybe he's in here threatening Tariq. Or he might want Tariq to help him get back in good with the Tejada family. Next clip, my people. We've got my girl. I will not call you Professor Addiction no longer if you survived. 
and she's got some kind of a tied coat on, like she's cold, maybe she's in recovery. She looks to be alive to me, but who is she talking to? I can't tell if that's Drew or if that's Mech, I mean Kane, excuse me. If I had to guess, it's probably more of a Drew talking because there's still a tie between Drew and Booty Duty Everett at Stansfield. So maybe he's come there to console her, talk about what happened with the mom, and maybe she was going to commit suicide, but I think my main man, Freaky Zeke, saved her before she was able to do that. And maybe this is an escape plan. Maybe this is Drew coming to tell her, you need to get the hell out of town. I'll keep Drew posted with what's going on with you. Get up out of here. Then we get some kind of a flashback scene uh, where Professor Plagiarism Jabari is talking to Lil Reek. And Lil Reek is just like, bro, I don't know what's going on. He's turning his head, looking to see what is going on. And this whole thing, they're talking about fair fights. And Tariq don't play fair. Tariq is as grimy as they come, calculated at that. Now, he makes decent plans, but there's always some holes in his plans. And I'm wondering exactly why is he having this flashback of professor plagiarism and what is this going to mean to the story? We see Jenny talking to someone who looks to be light-skinned. I got to assume that's Lauren. And maybe she's trying to persuade Lauren to get back on the stand, tell what she knows. And Lauren probably ain't feeling this considering what might have happened to Carrie. You know, as of right now, we think Carrie is dead. Even though I'm hoping like hell, Carrie, me and short man Tate, the five, eight and under brothers, we waiting on you. Come on back. We'll take you to influence with us. And probably I don't think Lauren is going to take that stand. Lauren ain't trying to have no parts of this. She don't want no business. And she probably don't trust Jenny at this moment. I wouldn't either. And we see the bag that was taken from Mecca. That is that exact bag. It looks like a female hand is opening. If you look at those nails, that's the nails of a female. And that is the exact bag that was taken from Mecca that had that ring. So it looks to me like the Tejadas and Tariq is still moving this weight because they do need to make this money. And then it looks like we got Drew having someone pour some money on him in this next clip. And then we see Tariq and Brayton arguing with each other. No doubt they're arguing because Tariq need those photos. And Brayton is just like saying, bruh, everything is about your ass. What is it going to take for Tariq to get Brayden to willingly give up them pictures? Maybe Tariq can get him to get Effie to date Brayden as a trade. I don't know. Maybe he can just express to Brayden, look, bruh, if I go down, you going down with me. Remember, who is the head of course correct on paper is Braden. And now Tariq has so much dirt on Braden and the things he's done with Kane. He did a lick with Kane. He's got a gun illegally that Kane gave him. Maybe he's able to put the squeeze on Braden, but whatever happens, this relationship is probably going to be damaged. Next scene, we see Kane talking to Braden saying, you got that gun I gave you. You need to use it. What is he talking about? Who does he want him to take out? Is he talking about Professor Ad Addiction? That who we talking about? Who exactly is he wanting him to take out? And, you know, for all we know, maybe the plot is against Mecca at this point. Um, we'll see. And then in the next scene, we see somebody driving by with the guns out, shooting up at the basketball court. Now, I dropped the set photos of you guys last week where Monet met up with Mecca, met up with Freaky Zeke. So at some point in time, Freaky Zeke is going to come back to Monet. And I was just laughing at Freaky Zeke and all his, his quotes. And he was curled up on the bottom being protected by Monet. Like, I don't know nothing about no shootout. I don't know nothing. And you see Mecca Dante shooting back at them. I mean, just shooting the hell out of somebody. Look at that gun. Bullets flying everywhere. Then we get Lorenzo, and now we're about to see Lorenzo get most sinister. He's talking to Drew. He's upset. They flash by to Monet, and we know what she's going through right now. She done lost her son. She's feeling like she's alone. The family's torn apart. 
She's at odds with her daughter. This is kind of the reverse of what happened with Ghost and Tariq. Lorenzo went in there and told that room and that little small-ass queen bed the hell up. He is so freaking mad about what has just transpired and what's going on. And I'm sure he wants to know who the hell is this Dante kid that she going behind the back talking to. And then you see Diana and Drew come in there. Probably they heard all this tearing up of stuff, gnashing of teeth, tearing up of closets. And Drew is looking at Diana like, this is all your fault. Diana's like, no, the hell, this ain't my fault. This is the fault of the secrets that's been kept. And then we see Lorenzo. He locking and loading. He is locking and loading the gun. We see the cars riding on the street. That's probably Lorenzo going to handle some business. Even though, how many cars Lorenzo got? Lorenzo got an Enzo and a Benzo. And now we see this Dodge, this Dodge um, Charger. Now, is this Lorenzo? Is this Mecca rolling up and down the street? And then in the final frame, we see Lorenzo winding up the baseball like he's um, a Golden Glove pitcher or something. And he throws it in the window. I mean, the mirror breaks the hell out the mirror. And that was the end of this trailer and the beginning of two of the most best episodes we probably going to see leading into a new season of a TV show. This thing is pure fire. Can't wait to see what happened. But more importantly, I can't wait to see the comments you guys are going to have. You have been posting some of the most hilarious and funny comments, as you see right now going across the screen. I'm more than grateful for you all coming to check us out in these lives. And just let me know, how much did you like the last Suffer? Not Supper, Suffer. To me, that has been probably the best scene of all the scenes so far this season in Power Book 2 Season 2. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen in these last episodes. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. Please, please comment, subscribe, get yourself that life game. Be sure to drop, um, follow us tonight as we go live at 8 p.m. instead of 9. Follow me on Instagram. And until that next Sex is Hell video, which will be tonight, 8 p.m., I'll see you.